Hello Pathfinders, my name is Jay Mpagan. I'm a volunteer with the North American Division Honors Task Force, and I want to share some exciting news with you. The North American Division has just recently approved a new honor called the Biosafety Honor. Now this is originally a South American Division Honor, but the North American Division went ahead and took the requirements and modified them for the Pathfinders of the North American Division. And I want to go ahead and share those requirements with you right now. There are two places that you can find the requirements to the new biosafety honor. The first place is where you can find all of the requirements for all honors at adventsource.org. They publish all the honors for the North American division. And the second place is the wiki answer book. The address is wiki.pathfindersonline.org. Which if you open up your browser and you type in adventsource.org, it will take you to their website. And you can go here to the little magnifying glass, which is the search toolbox. And you can just type in biosafety and it will come up there, the requirements. You click on the requirements, download them, and they'll pop up. There are a total of 18 requirements for this new honor. It is a skill level one, which means that all Pathfinders from friend to guide can go ahead and complete it. The second place, as I mentioned, was the Pathfinder Wiki. And you can go ahead and put that in your browser as well. You go to the Honors Answer Book. And you will find the requirements there as well. And you can scroll down. The list is usually um, alphabetical in order. And here we are, biosafety. So let's just go ahead and go through these requirements really quickly so that you can have an idea of what this honor is trying to do. The first requirement is define the following terms. We want to know what biosafety is. What is a biohazard? What is a risk factor? What's biological material? Chemical or a biological accident? Chemical or biological incident? It's not the same. What is a pathogen, aerosols, and PPE? The second requirement states, describe which PPEs are used by health professionals. What are they for? Discuss at least five other non-healthcare fields that routinely use PPE for protection from biohazards and why they're needed. And here are some suggestions in the answer book that some of our volunteers have already put in. Number three, differentiate between the following, which is outbreak, epidemic, pandemic, and endemic. Make a Venn diagram or chart that shows the things that are the same and those that are different. Many times we hear these terms tossed around and each one has a specific definition. The Pathfinder will be able to go ahead and make a chart of what the similarities and what the differences are as well. Number four is develop a list of precautions that should be taken during an epidemic or pandemic. Many of our Pathfinders might already be experts at this, but here we have some examples of other volunteers that have also included their answers as well. Number five says chart, list, or illustrate the differences between isolation and quarantine. Again, they are not the same. We want to make sure that our Pathfinders know what the difference is. Number six, choose two of the following historic diseases and answer. When did it occur? How many were infected? How was it spread? What were the symptoms? What were the biosafety precautions used? And how was it abated? And of the diseases that they can choose, they have smallpox, typhus, the 1918 influenza, also known as the Spanish flu, polio, and swine flu. Requirement seven sounds similar, but it is not. It says choose two of the following diseases and answer what are the symptoms? How is it spread? Is there a cure today? Where and when was there an outbreak, epidemic, pandemic? Is there a prevention for this disease? What are the biohazard safety methods used to combat the spread of this disease? And the options they have are cholera, tuberculosis, yellow fever, measles, malaria, Ebola, AIDS, and of course, 
COVID-19. Number eight says complete the following. Which of the previous diseases studied are or were endemic to your local area? We want the pathfinders to know specifically about where they live and what is endemic to their neighborhoods, to their region, to their state, province, their nation. B, which of the previous diseases are current travel concerns and what locations are greater risks to encounter them? C, choose a place in the world you would potentially like to travel to and learn of the outbreaks and diseases that require or recommend a vaccine. Many of our pathfinders like to travel a lot of places due to different things that are going on in their lives. And we want to know also that they are prepared for diseases. Number nine, how do vaccines work? Why is it important to be up to date with your immunizations? Number 10, name a national or global entity that assists in developing and applying disease prevention and control. And of this entity, A, where is the organization located? And B, what information does it relay? And why is it important to know how to access that information? For different countries, they'll have different entities and globally, there might be one as well. Number 11, explain why it is so important to remove medical gloves properly. Demonstrate the proper way to remove medical gloves without transferring pathogens from the gloves to your hands through the following exercise. And then they have the steps there of the exercise that they're going to use to make sure that they take off their gloves properly. A, coat your gloved hands with a simulated pathogen. They can use things like a glow germ, a cooking oil, ketchup, corn syrup, tempera paint, different things. Remove the gloves using proper technique without transferring any of the simulated pathogen to your skin or clothing. Dispose of the gloves, clean up the mess, very important. And there, again, one of our volunteers has put a video of someone showing us how to properly remove gloves. Number 12, regarding the cleaning of hands. Why is hand washing recommended rather than hand sanitizing whenever possible? Hand sanitizers are everywhere nowadays, thankfully, but we want to know why hand washing is much more important than only using hand sanitizers. B, what steps should be taken to make sure all parts of the hands are clean and explain why it is important to follow each step. C, what song have you found that is long enough that you can sing it completely while scrubbing your hands. Let me give you a hint. The Pathfinder song is actually a very good one to use while scrubbing your hands. Letter D. Why is the use of paper towels preferable over cloth towels that will be used several times? E. Make a video or other presentation to demonstrate to your instructor how to properly wash and dry your hands. And then we want to talk about hand sanitizers. Why is 70% isopropyl alcohol the most effective concentration as the main cleansing and sanitizer ingredient? What is the correct way to use hand sanitizer? Explain when it's appropriate to use hand sanitizer instead of soap and water. Regarding face masks, explain the rationale for using a homemade face mask. Learn how to improvise a face mask using materials commonly found around your home. Research and make a face mask using ideal fabric and design per instructions. Under what conditions would it be advantageous to upgrade to a certified commercial face mask? 15, regarding coughing, they're gonna do the following. They're gonna put themselves 12 inches in front of a clean pane of glass or mirror and they're gonna cough on it. We want them to look at all the droplets that the cough uh, put on the glass. They're gonna clean it and while maintaining the same distance from the glass, they're going to cuff into the crook of their arm. They're going to compare again the droplets from before. And the third one says repeat it but while wearing a mask this time. And again, compare the droplets, clean when they're finished. Based on your observations, identify what actions should be taken when coughing or sneezing to avoid contaminating other people. 16. Study the protocol that the Lord gave Moses concerning leprosy in Leviticus 13, 1 through 46. How do social distancing and quarantine principles of this passage compare to modern recommendations? 17. According to Matthew 24, 3 through 8, what does the Bible say about end time diseases? And the last one, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58, and Revelation 21, 1 through 5, 
what will happen to sicknesses and diseases when we go to heaven. So this new biosafety honor is a very wonderful honor, especially for what many of our pathfinders are going through these days. Y para mis amigos que hablan español, también tenemos aquí la opción en español. We also have the Spanish option for those who speak Spanish just a little bit better than English. I hope that this has been helpful, and I hope that you as a Pathfinder leader, or as a Pathfinder yourself, can go ahead and take advantage of this new honor, and that it might be for your benefit. God bless you, and stay safe, everyone.